few communities um, at ARC. I just haven't enjoyed them because I've been so busy. I have found various different outlets for a sense of community for whether it be because I'm brown or because I'm queer or whatever. But there's so many outlets, I just feel like sometimes it's a little overwhelming for me and I am scared that I might be ostracized if I join a certain community. Also a common trend in a uh, queer community is the importance of chosen family over blood relatives and knowing that maybe our parents maybe don't understand or agree with our lifestyles, how we form relationships. And so it's not necessarily a priority for me to make sure that my parents understand me because I feel very held and supported and seen in my other relationships. I like how the people in the community tend to be a lot more open or at least more caring towards one another as opposed to the straight community where no offense. Sometimes you see a lot more of like expectations or generals that are being passed on them. Um, most of my friends are also part of the queer community and a lot of them identify as bi or lesbian. I was trying to put a video together um, to this song like this is me and get a bunch of like local drag queens and I was gonna like dress up and drag um, and sadly it was just something that fell apart but um, I really want to. I think it would be so much fun. I mean to this day I still don't have like I have like four like queer friends um, and I think doing that like it just like hearing like being surrounded by my community and you know people like seeing me is it would it's it's really nice. I, I'm also HIV positive so I think that's also been a really prominent factor in my experience as a queer person especially when it comes to like navigating that in relationships with other people and um, especially in the beginning trying to find community and trying to find comfort. What I really like about being in a queer community, being with queer people is just I don't have to worry about feeling ugly in myself. There's no pressure to be your most perfect self, at least with me when I'm with my friends and in that way because there's no pressure it allows me to, 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 to be even more expressive. I started hanging out with um, a friend group last summer um, and we are all queer in our own delightful ways. I do recognize a few of the students who go to the Pride Center often and we can often talk about random things like Dungeons and Dragons and just whatever came to mind and we that place also is serves as a safe space for us to rant about our day, how how an assignment doesn't make sense to us. Things like that. And if I didn't have resources like a GSA club to be in, then I don't I don't I think I would just be absolutely miserable and <laughs> I wouldn't be as stable as I am. The Pride Center and having it there and it, it's really helpful. It really makes me feel comfortable in school a little more. It makes me actually happy to go to school. It makes it more fun and stuff. The QSA that is a club that helps, that is offered to people who identify with the LGBTQIA+. So I took it upon myself to go up to the mic, spoke in English and in Spanish, and talked about the QSA, went around passing out flyers, and it was something that I enjoyed. But unfortunately, during my, this last semester, I was so busy, I didn't get that much chance to be a part of the QSA. In communities where, like, LGBTQ communities, like club, I would think ahead and think of what people would think if I came out and was like, just bisexual. And then when asked about it, I, I don't know. I assume people would say that I wasn't under that umbrella. I didn't, I wasn't, I didn't count. It took me a minute to, to except myself and without needing anybody's approval. So. Uh, Rainbow Alliance, and they were they were pretty great. Uh, I'm not sure where they're at with the pandemic. Uh, I'm not sure if they're still around, uh, but uh, there is a, uh, I'd say, noticeable uh, queer population on the campus. They were smart, they were funny, um, they were really engaged in the community. Uh, yeah, it was a great experience. Yeah, I think uh, through relationship, you grow and become more mature as an adult. Uh, I'd like to grow more comfortable with that side of my identity. 
uh, be a community with more folks um, who are like me. I found community in the Umoja group. Um, they invited me to like, I think they have like village time or something like that and it was virtual. And then I started going to the in-person virtual village and I made like some cool friends in the Umoja Center through like visiting the library. I was always at the arts home base and the business home base. Were my two places where I felt like comfortable. I'm very grateful for Nagasa Center and how they've been able to help me. The main counselor, main student counselor, she has been the, um, one of the amazing people that has been able to help me. Nagasa Center has made me feel like it's my second plate, my second home, to where I can be able to go and be there and just be myself and I have to worry about responsibilities or what needs to be done. There I'm just able to like relax and just hang out with with people that are among my age and also among my background with regards to my ethnicity. I was in the SESI. I was a first generation Latina. The program really focused on Latinos um, in STEM and I was really into um, being a nurse or doctor at that time. So I was like, heck yeah, and I joined. And it was it was nice because you get to meet a lot of other students who are first, first time in college at all, let alone first generation. And it was nice because, I mean, we alone, the majority of the class was Latino, so taking a history class on our Chicano culture was really, um, really cool. I mean, I had a lady at Starbucks who was like, oh, you look so Egyptian, yada, yada, yada. And I was like, oh, she like, what even are you? And I was like, oh, my dad is black and my mom's Italian. And her first response was like, oh, where's your color? It was things like in high school, I ran for the Black Student Union president. And like a few of them told me that I shouldn't run because I wasn't dark enough and it was misrepresentation. Um, I tried to put on an event at ARC and I was met with a lot of backlash because of it. Um, because I wasn't dark enough and it looks like I'm trying to save the community and that was tough. I mean, I, ever since I was a child, like nobody believed that like that I was black. I didn't choose to come out this light. Like I didn't have a choice. I didn't have a say in it. I identify as mixed, but I identify with my black culture a lot more than I do with my Italian side. I think this kind of like stems back to like um, queerness in the black community and how it's kind of like an unspoken like we accept it but we don't talk about it. I feel like I get a little bit like thrown off when I'm in like a openly like queer space because I'm not used to being like in an environment where it's loud queerness. It's more so just like contained queerness because when I went to the Emoja conference in Anaheim there was definitely a lot of queer people and it was very nice and it felt very safe there like it felt like a nice it just felt nice to be there and I really liked it because of the lack thereof of a community for Asian Pacific I never really find myself a reason to trust my own community and it's also because of my parents and their friends and how they treated me and so it's a few levels of experiences and trauma that made me rather not seek friends in the asian pacific community if i'm hanging out with a bunch of like you know people like me like hispanics or like you know I might not be fully accepted by some people because I'm trans. But if I go to some to a queer community, like a queer hangout, sure, um, it might be majority white because that's unfortunately the case. And so I might be one of only three brown people of a group of 16. And so we'll all just congregate together and just stick together. It's not like we're intentionally segregating ourselves because we don't like you as a white person. It's because Sometimes there's some slight racism in that community. I'm also glad when going to community college that I met other people of color. I met other non-diversity people of color, knowing that they have similar experiences. I am like a firm believer as in like community like relating to people. <laughs> And that's the same way in like finding other queer and our diversion people or other black people. Well, um, there's not a lot of black students at Folsom, so uh, I know like a lot of the black uh, faculty and admin, like anyone black who I can meet, um, 
Uh, yeah, I'm friends with. Black and queer, uh, no. Uh, but I made black and queer friends at other campuses in Los Rios. I think it is always important to highlight uh, people of color who are queer and just, you know, queer folks in general still. Um, despite the bigotry trying to erase our stories, you gotta scream the stories even louder, you know? I feel like especially um, black trans people, you know, they are, they are uh, under attack. We, the community, we ought, gotta look out for them and also acknowledge that intersectionality as an aspect.